Hey, it's Chris Wong at Mapbox. If you follow us on Twitter, you may have seen these animations that we've been putting out of stages of the Tour de France. Uh, so we're animating a line along the map for each stage, and we put those out each day. I wanted to do a quick video to show the techniques we're using to accomplish these animated videos that follow the creation of a trail uh, or track on the map. Um, so I have a, uh, a similar setup here uh, to what was used in these videos. And you can see we're zooming in slowly while rotating. We're then drawing the line on the map and moving the camera and rotating uh, to follow the, the kind of leading edge of that as we draw it. Uh, and then at the end, you'll see <clears throat> to do a nice uh, fit bounds and actually include the entire uh, track in view once it's done. Um, so let's take a quick look at some code. Again, uh, you know, we're setting up the map with, a, with fixed dimensions so we can get a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We're going to zoom in slowly on a fixed point while rotating. We're going to animate the, the drawing, uh, animate the drawing of the line string over time, and then we're going to also follow the leading edge of that uh, line string um, with the camera while rotating. Uh, and then finally, we export uh, the video from the HTML canvas. Um, so not much to it to, to set the dimensions of the map. Um, just change the map container with CSS, and we can get a nice 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Um, so with this example, we jump into scripts.js, uh, which is instantiating a map. Um, pretty standard here for Mapbox GL use, but once we load the map, uh, we're doing a few things. So I have a function called add 3D, uh, which just sets uh, fog, adds a sky layer, and adds terrain. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, and then we jump into, you know, the first thing we need is to get some data. So this downloads GeoJSON, which is local to this repository. Um, you could pull it from anywhere. Um, and then we feed that GeoJSON into this play animations function. So play animations, if we come down here, uh, is going to basically step through each uh, step of this animation sequence. Um, so the very first thing we do is add sources and layers for the line string. Uh, those will just let us draw the line later on. Um, next, we actually need the start point. So we have this GeoJSON data, but we need the start point so that we know where to zoom in on. Um, so once we have a start point, which I store as target long lat, I pass that into fly in and rotate. And fly in and rotate is uh, a wrapper function that I made that is um, actually handling the animation. So it iterates over um, a request animation frame and uh, is moving basically between uh, these, these start and end um, altitudes, start and end bearings, and is zooming in on target long lap. So over the course of this duration, which is five seconds, it will go from a start altitude of uh, two million meters uh, to an end altitude of 3,000 meters, and it will start at, with its bearing of zero, with, which, with north up, and it will end at a bearing of 90. Um, so all these are configurable, of course, um, but if we go into fly in and rotate, we can kind of see what it's doing. Um, so I'll scroll down to the bottom first because uh, the first thing that happens in this function is request animation frame, and then it calls frame. So what's frame? Frame is this function uh, right here that effectively is just kind of calculating its position over time uh, so it knows kind of where it's at in the duration. Uh, and then we just use that to adjust the camera. So at the beginning of the duration, uh, the altitude should be high, and then at the end of the duration, it should be low. And then all it's doing is just math to figure out where those should be. Um, so for example, we have to calculate the new altitude here. So all of this is based on animation phase. Animation phase is the value that changes uh, with every iteration. And then the rest is just a bunch of uh, basic math to calculate uh, the altitude and bearing. So once we have the altitude and bearing, um, we have to actually get the position of the camera because uh, remember we're kind of pointing the camera at a, a fixed point on the ground. Uh, so the camera needs a long lap for its its physic its vertical location, um, but it also needs you know based on its pitch and bearing and altitude, uh, it'll know exactly where it's supposed to be. So this function uh, is in our utilities. It's just called compute camera function or compute camera position by bearing and pitch. Uh, we feed all we feed the pitch, the bearing, the target point that we want to point the camera at, and the altitude into it, and we get back uh, the the coordinates, the long lat coordinates for where we should put the the camera. Um, and then lastly, basically we're setting these camera. Uh, we set the pitch bearing, and then we set the position, um, and then we set the set both of those options, and that's what actually updates the camera. Basically, once that's over. You'll notice that we have uh, two values that are returned from fly in and rotate. And basically, we just want the bearing and altitude of the camera once this, once this initial um, 
once this initial uh, zoom in is done so that we can pass those into animate path. Animate path is basically just doing uh, the same thing. So it's, it's still calling request animation frame. Um, but instead of uh, a controlled zoom in, uh, we tell it to follow the path. Um, so there's a little bit more to it than that, but let's take a look at animate path here. And you'll see a lot of the same. Uh, we have a frame function that's going to be called um, recursively. Uh, and let's see. So first we need to calculate the distance along the path based on the animation phase. Um, so this is using turf to figure out how far along that line we are uh, in each frame. Uh, this is a really interesting bit. Um, so with this chunk of code, we're actually setting the paint property. Uh, and we use what's called line progress here uh, to actually uh, split the line into you know, part that we're going to draw yellow and part that we're going to draw as um, basically transparent, which is what this is. Um, so this is, again, using animation phase, which changes every iteration. Um, and that's how we achieve this, uh, the animation of drawing the line. Um, you may have seen this example uh, where we draw a line by actually manipulating the data. And this is uh, kind of an earlier example of how to achieve this effect. Um, but what I just showed you here in the code using line progress is actually more similar to this. So this is a, a line progress um, example where we're actually doing like a smooth gradient. Um, so effectively, all we're doing is, is accomplishing the same thing, but instead of a gradient, we're splitting, you know, we're showing one part of the line as, as filled and the other part is transparent. Uh, and where we, where we draw that distinction or, or that, uh, the, the transition between those two is based on uh, which, which frame we're in. Um, so again, I'll, I'll animate it here and you can see what's going on. So again, we're, we're, this is the first part of the animation where we zoom in and then the second part where we actually follow the line. So just to finish up, sort of the same things apply. Uh, just like we did in fly in and rotate, we have to basically come up with a collection of options to pass into the camera and then set them. Um, so we uh, first we have to compute the ground position, we have to compute the bearing, uh, and then we pass all of this stuff in. Um, so we set, set pitch bearing, set the position, and then apply those camera options, and then repeat. Um, so each frame we just are, are kind of nudging things along a little bit to make sure that uh, it's looking where we want it to look. And that's, the, that's what we do. Um, so once we're done with you know, this fly in and rotate, we're done with animate path. Uh, the very last step is to get the bounding box of the entire GeoJSON so that we can just call fit bounds. Uh, and that's, uh, again, a much simpler way to achieve this animation uh, without having to do you know, custom iteration over um, over animation frames, um, but we just say, let's do a two, 2,000 uh, millisecond uh, fit bounds to uh, include the entire track. And I'll show you one more time how that looks. And so the last part that I didn't cover is actually exporting this to video. Um, and there's actually a good chunk of code that would be involved in here that I, I don't necessarily want to talk through, but it's more or less copy and paste from this example, which is in the Mapbox GL. JS um, documentation. So you can see here um, they're importing um, this MP4 encoder library. Um, and I'll just kind of show it very quickly. But um, you know, you can see there's there's a uh, basically with here we say map dot on render call frame. So it's effectively calling this function every time the, the, the canvas renders in Mapbox GL and this function, you know grabs everything from the screen and actually saves it uh, as, a, as a frame in a, an exported video, uh, and then it just downloads it. So you can actually just copy this and paste it in, and you should be able to get pretty far with that. Um, so thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you can uh, achieve this similar effect in your Mapbox GL maps if you're interested. Thanks. All the code that I just talked through is published online on GitHub in the Mapbox Impact Tools repository. Uh, if you click on Journey Animation Sequence, you'll see all the files that I was just presenting, uh, and you can easily run this locally by just uh, running a live web server uh, on index.html. Um, if you build something with this, we would love to hear about it, so go ahead and uh, tag Mapbox on Twitter, and it'll definitely catch our eye. We'd love to see how you are dealing with animations and camera positions using Mapbox GL. I uh, also want to give a shout out to our Solutions Architecture team and Moritz Forster, uh, who worked on the, um, the code for the original set of videos that you're seeing on Twitter uh, that use this technique. Um, so thanks for that, and happy mapping.